Okay, so, hi everybody, I've already been introduced and I've already stored enough time with technical problems, so let me go straight ahead. So when you solve a partial differential equation, you're interested in, first of all, generating, uh, using finite elements, this is important, you're first interested in creating a geometric modeling of the surface, the volume, where you're going to solve your PD. Then we need to mesh, because finite elements essentially are, are mesh required, uh, requires the mesh to work. Then I discretize my PDE. So this is done usually using, this is what Firefox does. And then I'm solving my linear or nonlinear system. This is what Patsy takes care of. So these two elements were outside of Firefox before. So you need to generate your mesh, and then you grab your mesh, and you use it somehow. There are some basic mesh, mesh inside of Firebreak, but you cannot generate generic meshes. What we did with uh, the, the NetGen to Firebreak interface, the first one was to bring everything inside of Firebreak. So now you can generate your mesh inside of the code of your Firebreak code. Why did we choose NetGen? Well, I was in Vienna, they use NetGen in Vienna, but <laughs> not only that, so it has got a pbind 11 wrapping, so we can interact with all the Python, uh, so we can interact using Python with all the features that the method provides. It, you can construct uh, geometry using the constructive uh, solid geometry framework or open cascade technology. Open cascade is the industry standard, so that, that's good. It supports adaptive mesh refinement. This was one of the key feature that brought us to, to write. We wanted to add adaptive mesh refinement to Firebreak because it was not there, and we did this through uh, NetGen. But it also supports anisotropic mesh refinement. This is something that, and anisotropic meshing. Uh, this is something that we didn't take advantage in the old version. I will show you that now we can take advantage. We can do anisotropic meshing. And it supports high order meshes for curved geometries, which is something that right now is quite tricky to do in, as I was checking before uh, with David, to do in, in prior break, because you cannot, with the state of the art, import a curved mesh from uh, GMesh. Okay, but there is some work, I've seen some Petsy stuff, Petsy related stuff that allows you to import uh, GMesh uh, curved mesh in high order mesh in Petsy, but it, I don't know what's happening in the layer there between Firedrake and, and Petsy. So, how do you get this? Python, Firedrake, flag NetGen. This is going to install NetGen. Uh, you already have a uh, Firedrake install. You use the Firedrake update. You need to have, if you have an external Petsy, you need to have this commit inside or else nothing is going to work. And if you want to do, to do an isotropic mesh refinements, you need to use a different version of NetGen because not all the, the, the function and the methods that are, we use for anisotropic mesh refinements are exposed in NetGen. I need to open a PR there. Now, previous version, as I was saying, we have op the, the main feature were open cascade. NetGen, to gen NetGen can be used to generate linear meshes, marking geometry for finer mesh, and adaptive mesh refinement through the refined market element methods. All of this has already landed in the master, so you can use this feature already. What are the new features? Well, the new feature come all from uh, the NGSolve user meeting. So I was at the NGSolve user meeting and uh, I was presenting there the new NGS Petsy interface. So essentially, there is a long history between an NGSolve and Petsy, which don't get very much along in the sense that they have like three different uh, ways to interface with Petsy and none of them is maintained. So we decided to solve this problem and create one interface that is going to be maintained and take this. Now four. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, essentially there are now four different ways. Uh, one gets shipped in with, uh, with NGSOV, but it doesn't work in serial. One doesn't work in parallel. One only works in serial and in C++. And now we have the one that hopefully, the, the one that is supposed to be used. That's all. Uh, we are using this for us to use essentially NG, uh, Petsy as a linear algebra bank and also on GPUs for uh, for NGSO, this was the main, main idea because uh, NGSO GPU support only works with CUDA when they needed to make it uh, GPU agnostic. Okay, so, but one of the feature, and then we can use it to solve linear system, yada, yada, yada. Uh, one, of the, one of the main feature in there, which is the one that we are interested in, is the NetGen DMplex interface. So essentially I want to get a NetGen mesh and get it out as a, as a Petsy DMplex. Uh, why I might talking to you about this, because while writing the, the NGS Petsy interface, I realize this means let's code to maintain for Firebreak. If we switch from, uh, uh, from all the code that we have into Firebreak, we put it into uh, NGS, Pets, uh, NGS Petsy, it's less code to maintain for Firebreak, which means good. Uh, more code to maintain for the NetGen developer and NGSO developer, but I'm the one maintaining it, so it's a win-win situation. Uh, and 
and uh, uh, there is no, the most important thing is that there is no need to install the full ng-solve library. So right now, when, if you want to use an, ng an engine mesh, you need to install ng-solve, which is the finite element library. So to solve a finite element problem, I need to install another finite element library. Not great. Right now, you can just install netgen and ngs Patsy and no ng-solve. So only, you only require the mesher, which is the, the components that we need, and this external library. What are the new features that come with, uh, um, with this? Well, we can use high order meshes. This is going to be, I think this is the, great, the, the most important feature, but yeah, I will show you also some others. We can do an isotropic mesh refinement through the Z refinement and the HP refinement method. I'm going too fast. Uh, and we can do uh, Patsy transformation. So we can, this is a feature, this is quite an interesting feature, mainly actually for um, NetGen people, because it allows you to use a Patsy transformation on uh, any edge of mesh. This allows us to get Alfred, Powell Sabin splits, uh, quadrilateral mesh, hex mesh, all this kind of thing. But uh, um, it's a bit cumbersome, but I will show you. Okay. Open cascade, high order meshes. How does this work? All of this needs to work in parallel, so, but meshing, as usual, is going to be done in serial, and then you're going to load it in parallel. So what do we do? We initialize uh, a works plane, which is a, an open cascade object. We create the arcs composing this figure over here. Uh, then we define this as a geometry. We pass it as, as an open cascade geometry. We generate the mesh. All of this happens on rank zero. Okay. Then we create dummy meshes because then I need to, essentially all core needs to have the same object, but they are dummy meshes on, on all the other uh, workers. And then I create a mesh, which is a linear mesh from, from my NetGem mesh. And since it's an SGM mesh, now it has a new field, which is a, with a new method, which is curve field, which returns me the, the, the mesh, uh, the, sorry, the fire drake function of order, in this case, three, which represent the curved mesh, uh, which essentially which represent the curved mesh uh, adapting the mesh to the geometry. So what I'm doing here is, this, this, all of this is isoparametric P3, because I'm, I'm putting order three, and I'm putting so with one line of code, now we get curved meshes. So to answer with, can you go with this bit? She actually this bit. Nah. This answers her question for a moment. Um, <laughs> so, so, that, so this is the, um, you see, he, there's an FT mesh inside an FT mesh. So the inside FT mesh is your first mesh. And then he's just making a function on that mesh and then passing it back to the mesh constructor to get another. And, and that's what you would do. mesh construct is then constructing a mesh with the coordinates mapped through that function. That's right. <clears throat> yes. Why is it called curve field? Like, because dimensions or like no, no, no. It's in any dimension. I will show you a three-dimensional example in a second. It's just that uh, I need a, so I need a field to represent my curved mesh or banded mesh. Should have been banded, but the command in NetGen is curve, so I kept the name okay. from NetGen. But this is a we can change the name. It's just ND. Bendy. Yeah. Ooh, I like this. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> this is the term that has traditionally been informally used in fire by all the meshes. Okay. Bendy meshes. <laughs> okay, so bendy field. I can ask for a bendy field and then we will get a bendy field. Uh, an implementation detail. Uh, so first of all, thank you, thank you Pablo, because he was, he was the one explaining me how to do this uh, and found this solution. And the second thing is, as Pablo knows, this was a flipping nightmare, nightmare to implement because NetGen rotates the reference element to reduce the... So you have the reference element, which usually is this flipping triangle. Mm -hmm. NetGen will rotate it and then compute the mapping in order to decrease the, the essentially the, the work that they need to compute the mapping. So I need to remap all the dots for each element. So this was quite tricky. Finding the, the, the permutation was... So finding the, the, matching, the mapping between the reference element from FireDrake to, um, to NGSolve NetGen in reality, because NetGen has also finite element infrastructure inside. Uh, it's tricky, uh, but and at the beginning it was done with n factorial complexity, now we reduce it to n log n, so this runs fast. Um, is it quadrilateral mesh? So how do you ask for quadrilaterals? I will show you in a moment. Oh. Uh, so, but this is, those are triangular meshes. It, uh, I, sorry, the, the, the image is not really clear, but you will see better mesh in a moment. Like this one. So I'm Italian, and hence I need to have a pizza without a slice in my, in my <laughs> slide show. So that's my slide. And this is a P3 again. Uh, okay. High order meshes. You can do sphere. You can do. Yeah. 
you, you, you describe your geometry, we look on cascade, you, are, you, you, you tell how much bending, you, how much element you want to, to represent it. You can do, I don't know, I think I tested up to order 20. After that, I don't know, but up to order 20 it works. Uh, ah, another thing, this is independent on the, um, on the location of the point. So Gmesh needs to have equispace point, uh, not gauss lobato You can use gauss lobato If your reference element in fire break has gauss lobato point, this is going to use the, the, the points in the reference element automatically. Hmm? Uh, simplex no, but quads do. Yeah. So this, is the, this was the point of using quads. I think this is a conversation that happened in this lab uh, mm -hmm. recently. So this is what... Yeah. And yeah, I can solve Poisson. Uh, because. Okay. <laughs> Why not? Uh, okay. Uh, different thing now. Uh, this is just for Pablo. Uh, I know you're working on this plate. Uh, so, this is how we can create this plate and curving it with very little line of code. Uh, what we are doing, I'm marking the circle with a finer meshing because I want to grade my mesh. I want to grade my mesh in such a way that, uh, that is graded towards the part I've removed. So I mark the circle with a, a finer mesh, and then I mesh everything with a larger mesh, uh, and I remove the circle, sorry, the disk from the square, and that's what I get. Uh, and then I curve everything here with a P3. Uh, all my examples are with a P3 because all Joachim examples are with a P3, but you can go. Um, okay. Now we get to an isotropic mesh refinement, which is a different feature. So we can mark for a, we can use OCC technology, to, sorry, um, framework to mark uh, singular vertices. Here I'm marking the top and the bottom left corner of a square to be singular. And then I'm asking for a refined, to refine the element twice. Uh, it's hard to see, but essentially this element here, which is the corner element, gets refined twice. And so I can mark specific sing vertices in the mesh that I want to be more refined. Uh, and this comes useful, for example, if you have, if you're solving Maxwell on a cube without a cube, from which you remove a cube because you have a singularity there. So you need to grade the mesh there. And we can do it with the uh, refine HP2. And here, this is the important. Uh, this in NetGen will generate a mixed uh, hex and tens mesh, which it's not able to be imported into Fire because Fire does, does only synthesis or only quads. So we need to pass an agent flag. The agent flag is purified to tets. And now everything works. Same concept with the singular edges. Now I'm constructing a cylinder and I want the, the, this part, this edge, to be refined because I might have some singularity there. I mark it with the HP refinement. I use the HP refinement next. And purify to tets. Now, let's assume I have air, air, plate, metal plate in between, and I have a source of heat below. Now I know that my heat is going to, um, and I want to see how the, the, the heat evolves in the full problem, my heat is going to be conducted much quicker in my plate, hence I need a much finer mesh in my plate. How do I construct this mesh? Whether well, I, I do a Z refinement. A Z refinement is an anisotropic mesh refinement, which essentially grades my mesh in such a way that it's, the, the plate is much, is much finer, is refine in a much finer way, and at the same time, I can specify, so what I'm doing here, I'm specifying how thick I want, so I'm grading at the same time forward my mesh. This is so you can create a slices, and this is, is telling you how you want to grade your anisotropic mesh refinement, and uh, you run this, and if you run this, it's not going to work because I've not included an, an important piece of code, which is you need to use purify to text. Whenever you are... Whenever you're running a, um, uh, um, an isotropic mesh refinement feature, you need to purify to that flag. Let's see transformation. Now, uh, I don't know if anybody's interested in Scott Bogilius. We know Scott Bogilius P2P1. We love Scott Bogilius P2P1. How do, we how do we solve for, how do we generate this mesh? There was a code, I think, done by Lawrence. Oh, Florian. Uh, Florian, okay, which was a bit of a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> so, last, last time we were here in Great Lissidon, Patrick and I fixed it introducing a Petsy transformation, which does Alfred refinement. So now you can apply any Petsy transformation to your uh, DMPlex in Firebreak or to an edge mesh. This is what I'm doing here. I'm applying the Petsy transformation to an edge mesh. Um, and, uh, uh, well, this, this is fairly easy. So I create a transformation, I pass it as a flag as a transformation to my edge mesh, and then I curve. And you are wondering, why are you curving? Because 
in virtue of the next slide because I want to show you that here nothing is curved. Yeah. Okay, because my, what, what happened is that when I apply a Petzl transformation, I lose notion of the geometry, unfortunately. But then I showed this to Joachim and he told me Scott Bugilius is a stupid element. Uh, and I will prove you why it's a stupid element. And he constructed, he implemented alpha speed directly in, uh, in Edgen. And in this way, you can work on curved elements. Uh, and now the, the, the delta split is done on curved elements. And then we solved Stokes, and this was not divergence free. Because divergence free on curved elements, Scott Bogilius is not divergence free on curved elements, but then we discovered that actually this has been solved by Nila, so it's not a stupid element, you just need a, a particular mapping. So we reached this conclusion. To be fair, that was only in like 2022, so. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a very recent thing, and now we are working on uh, a mass conserving scheme, you know, Joachim mass conserving scheme for Curved for curve because on alpha splitting we can impose symmetry of the Cauchy stress tensor strongly. So this is the reason why we wrote this code and then we want to implement everything in Firebase for the preconditioning infrastructure. Uh, but another Petzl transformation is the refined to box transformation. This will ensure because somebody last time at the last Firebase user meeting asked me, "Can you give me a quad mesh?" And I was like, "Yes, of course I can give you a quad mesh. You just need to you just need to use quad flag in your uh, in your." Um, you need to use a quad flag in your in your net gen, and this doesn't work because net gen will create almost all quads and one flag. <laughs> what do you do there? Yeah, you don't do anything. So uh, the way we the workaround that I found, I will probably not use this. I will try to generate the quad mesh in net gen and then only refine that single triangle that appears. But right now we have all triangles. Use the refine to box, and we obtain a quad. Uh, but uh, probably with a bit of work on the net. So, but anyway, you can do power sub, you can apply any Petzl transformation. If you use the quad mesh, the, the quad flag, this is going to give you uh, a quad mesh. Uh, and future words. Uh, okay, so uh, improve the quadrilateral elements, as I was mentioning, and hexahedral support. Right now, hex is, uh, you can create axis mesh in, in uh, purely axis mesh using this trick. But I cannot import them in as a DMplex because I haven't written all the mapping required, so I have to do that. This is left from last time, last uh, last five meeting. I will do it at a certain point, which is make all of so essentially I I might do an isotropic mesh refinement or some sort of mesh refinement, but this is not embedded in a hierarchy, so I cannot do multi grade on it. I need to find a way to embed this in a, in a hierarchy, in a hierarchy. Ah, uh, an isotropic mesh refinement and mesh refinement also work with curve. Uh, meshes, I forgot to say. Uh, then another feature is the snap back to OCC or to the open cascade geometry. So Petsy can be made open cascade aware. And so once you have your mesh, you can make the mesh snap back to the geometry entirely in Petsy. And there is the open cascade element stored in Nagin. So we need to find a way to connect the two. I don't know how to make them communicate. And the last thing is just, you know, you might be solving a nonlinear problem and you want to see the solution at each iteration live. Uh, this is something that you can do with the Petsy GLVs tool, and so I wanted to, sorry, not the, uh, the MFM tool and the Petsy GLVs uh, interface, and that's something that I would like to do. And all the codes to reproduce the, the example that I showed you, you can find them at this, in this repo. So, yeah, that's it. Okay. You can do you can you so you can do it so they are stored in parallel as soon as because then they're redistributed and you can either store them as an edge and mesh and then reload them up through via an edge or you can do it via power grid as you okay. prefer. Fantastic. And second question is um, so I always travel with because when you want to use file deck, it's not only file deck, you need to do this and this and this and this and this and that. So for instance I if I draw the documentation on how to create file deck compatible meshes with G mesh because I always forget how to do it and it was like. And now this is amazing, but I'm looking at the code, it looks very complicated. Like I'm, I don't know the stuff and it looks so it's easy for you because you know what this is. But <laughs> so I think you know, it's open the scan and then you have a comment and so on. So my question is the documentation and then so on. Okay, so all of this, so whatever happened, so this is gonna be the same for all your code. So this is not gonna change, you just need to get a geometry and generate a mesh. And this is the, the file. So this three line of code are the only thing that we need to do, and this is specific to my implementation. Yeah. 
All the thing that comes above, so describing the geometry, the anisotropic mesh refining, all of this, you find in the documentation for NGSOF, and this is clearly documented, you have a lot of examples. So, and so essentially you copy the, 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 the NGSOF example up until here, and then you leave the code as it is. It's fantastic having a page on the page of documentation that says you do this and that. That does not count. You cannot expect music. Okay, I will, I will, I will, you, you know, writing documentation is not my stronger suit, but I will write. Yes, we did write this. <laughs> 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 I will write it. Well, the back. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it's a oh, camera's question, but how is it compared to MMG? <clears throat> MMG? Another one of the solvers, another one of the mesh. Uh, I don't, as I was pointing out, I was in Vienna, so I only met one, so no, uh, jokes aside. So I know that Netgen is great compared to others, to other measure. I know that it outperforms time to, time, time to mesh uh, G mesh and it outperforms DIST mesh, which are the two that I know. Uh, and it has lots of features. It's practically the standard, for example, it's practically the standard for open foam, so for fluid dynamics uh, simulation, but I cannot, I don't know this measure you were mentioning. So uh, it does run in parallel, uh, and, it create, and it can create mesh in parallel. Uh, the uh, NetGen FireDrake interface is not capable of doing that. So you can run it offline, as you would run NetGen, and then import it, and this would work, but not in a single Python script. We're getting there, I promise. In uh, these examples, yeah. should you be passing the com that you're using to the mesh? No, it grabs it from the mesh. But you've declared, it's, you make the mesh after you've done that. No, what, what do you mean? So, the, the, the so when, you get, when you create fd.mesh, yes. should you be passing the com that you've got at the top line one? Yes. So this one here? Yeah. Yes, if I run it in parallel, I should do that, yes. But I think... That's parallel code. So, I, you, so Ru, yes, Ruben is entirely correct. But I think he gets it by default, because this runs no, in no, parallel, no, no problem. No, okay, so yes. you set a com at line one. Yes. Um, and... Um, that's the wrong com. Ah, because now Petsy has the com word inside, sorry, the Firebrick has the com word, right? Yes. Okay. It's a Pyomi 2 Okay. Well, okay. it's also, um, it, this is dangerous mm -hmm. because um, if I now change the communicator on line one, mm -hmm. then line eight will hang. Yeah, this happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. So yes, so the, the question is entirely correct. In order for this to be safe, uh, that outer the inner mesh constructor, sorry, on line eight mm -hmm. needs to be passed that com. Com, because otherwise you're asking for parallel hell. This is explainable about the head. Okay, perfect. Thanks. <laughs> and now I don't know how to fix it. Uh, do you have a feature, or do you intend to have a feature to build a mesh based in an external data? For instance, if you have a field with a region that's a high variation, and it's a parameter of your equation, so when you need to have um, a refinement, refinement of mesh in some region, you have this feature, read on external data, and uh, to create a mesh according to this external data? So you can create, this is something that was passed, so you create the basic mesh, essentially, and then you want to refine it according to external data. This is what you are asking, right? Yeah. So you can you convert this external data to a DG0 field, one for each cell that you want to refine, and then you pass this DG0, D0 field to the refine to marked elements, and this is going to refine your mesh. Uh, uh, you find that this is in the documentation. And that works in parallel? And this works in parallel, yes. This works in parallel because, and it's tested in parallel already, and it's, but this is in the old version of the, this is already there. Yeah, okay, cool. How do you get the point data into, the, before you make your DG0 field, how do you get that? You ring Ruben. <laughs> I have no clue. Seriously. <laughs> I have absolutely no clue. <laughs> you, 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 really? Were you paying that little attention? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you might want to, so you might want to do, so there is, yeah, you, you, know, you do it exactly like that because you've got a phase mesh, so you you you, you suck it in and you use mesh mesh interpolation and life's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's, yeah. Did I see another hand somewhere? Or was it? Never thought of my own. No. All right. Okay. Thank you. Water.